Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to Business Innovators Radio. My name is Tim Dimmick and your host for today. We have a great show in store for those individuals going through or coming out of divorce and who find themselves in the situation of having to find a new place to live. We're going to talk about whether you should consider renting or buying your next home and what you need to know to make the right decision, as well as things you should consider when selecting the area you want to live in and also what you need to prepare for after you make the move. With us to discuss this topic is Shelby Miller. Shelby is a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty and spends a great amount of her time helping individuals in this situation and has even recently released an ebook on this subject called Buying a Home After the Big Split, What You Need to Know to Get Through the Maze. Shelby, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. It's great to be here. You are quite welcome. We appreciate the fact that you've taken the time out of your schedule to be with us today to share your knowledge on the subject as there are thousands of individuals that go through divorce and abruptly find themselves, you know, having to make important life decisions that affect not only themselves, but their children and and the rest of their family. Uh, For many, one of those decisions is where to live. And Shelby, the reason we brought you onto this show is that you spend a lot of your time helping people in this situation. And through talking with you, I've learned that you've experienced this firsthand and had to make those tough choices. So with your permission, Can you share with our audience a little bit about your story and the desire that this created in you to help others in similar situations? Tim, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm happy to see that although it was a situation that I never wanted to be placed into, it's absolutely been a benefit to me now in where I am in my life and being able to help others. So a little bit about my story. Um, I was with my husband for 20 years. We have two absolutely wonderful teenage sons, um, but I say that with a smile because they are teenage sons and they're pretty awesome. (laughs) And um, we also owned our own construction company. We were self-employed and had been in business for many years. And besides being responsible for our own family, we had other families that we were responsible for and two and clients and everything else. And in the midst of all of that, I found myself that I was going to be going through a divorce. And I have to tell you, honestly, um, if it weren't for my faith in God, Tim, and knowing that he had me and my boys, I probably would have been a crumbling mess. But I didn't have time for that. Um, I needed to make sure that I was able to have the least amount of chaos for two teenage sons, make sure that they had a smooth transition and didn't see a lot of uh, chaos and emotion, but more of a strength there. Mm -hmm. As well as I had to sell my house. I had to find us a place to live. I had to find a job. Um, I had a lot that was going on. And I was blessed that I had a friend that was in real estate who not only gave me the opportunity to talk with her and give me guidance on what was needed to sell my home, and give me the guidance because I already knew where I wanted my kids to be. I wasn't leaving the school district or anything like that, but Mm -hmm. I, I knew what I wanted for them, but to help me work through the emotional process of that. um, But besides doing those two things, she actually offered me a job to work in her Keller Williams office, um, doing administration for the team with my management skills that I already had. And, help her with her agents that she currently had on her team. This gave me the opportunity to learn the back end of real estate first, which was really great for me because my previous experience before my ex-husband and I owned a construction company is I had worked for Home Depot for 13 years. So I've been in the housing industry for a very long time and this was just the next transitional step for me. So I was able to learn the legalities of real estate first and went, wow, this is a no brainer. I have the opportunity to not only do what I love being in homes and housing and, and all of that, but I have the opportunity to help other people with the questions that they have that I was blessed enough to have someone help me through as well. 
And that's kind of where I'm at now is, is I truly enjoy working with people and parents that are in transition to make sure that they're able to find great homes and affordable neighborhoods and help them move forward with the next step in their lives. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. And I know just like you went through it, you know, those listeners out there that are going through divorce currently and not sure where to turn, it's always nice to hear. It's sort of calming to hear from someone that has experienced it. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. So for today's show, we wanted to focus on, you know, one of these major decisions that people go through, and that's where to live. Not only where to live, but whether to rent or own. And I think that's probably when it comes to choosing where am I going to live next? You know, the biggest question that I, I believe most people probably have, and you you can verify this, is how do they make that decision on whether to rent or own? What are the things that they need to know um, in making that choice and where do they start? Well, I think first you, you need to start with taking a look at your finances and knowing what your current financial situation is. Um, you know, meeting with a mortgage consultant and discussing with them what your income is, your assets, your debt, all of those different things are key factors to determine if you can even be approved for a mortgage. And I'm not an expert in that part of it. That's where I have a group of lenders that I work with and refer to that help my clients determine that. Um, you know, when it comes to your income, you you may have questions in regards to if you receive child support and, and or spousal support. Should you count that? Can you count that? Mm-hmm. Um, you may be just going back out into the workforce and, and how much time do you need to have of length of employment that can help you um, count as income towards that? You need to take a look at your assets that you have that are either you know, personally owned or jointly owned. What can you use in regards to joint accounts that you have? Um, retirement funds, gifts that um, could be given to you. We would all know that in the process of a divorce, there is absolutely an amount of debt that can be received by going through a divorce. And knowing, again, um, you know, if, if you currently are owning your own home with your, with your ex spouse or you're in the process of a divorce and you're still on that mortgage. What, what are the steps that you need to take in order to purchase another home? Student loans, joint liabilities, all those types of things are really first and foremost important to talk to a mortgage lender about so that they know whether you can afford to buy a home. And if it's fiscally responsible, responsible for you to do that at this time or do you need to work on credit do you need i mean the worst thing that you can do is panic and be oh i need this this and this because i'm in the process of a divorce and run up your your credit and then all of a sudden have a poor credit score because you're unable to qualify for a mortgage so when you're thinking of making that decision the first step that i always tell someone is to go ahead and talk to a mortgage lender and determine, first of all, do you qualify? Mm-hmm. And then if you do, then we discuss next of where, where do I want to <laughs> live? And, and if I can't, and whether I should rent or own. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. Um, and I know you don't always have the answers. You know, neither do your customers or, or your prospects have the answers to all those questions that you just mentioned. You know, the debt, the income, you know, the assets. And that's really why you need to take your time. You know, take, I would say, take a deep breath, step back and, Absolutely. you know, look at the whole situation, get somebody that can give you good advice from the outside, you know, when you're in that Taking situation. Taking the emotion so, out of it. Yeah, exactly. Take the emotion out and look at the facts. <clears throat> to answer your question on whether you should rent or own, besides the fact you might be able to buy, but it might not be right for you. Do you have support around you? Are you currently in an area that you like to live? Are you in the right location at the right time? Right. Um, is it fiscally makes sense for you again in regards to you might have the funds to do so, but is that all you're going to ever do? Are you going to be house rich and then be poor everywhere else? Um, those are things that, again, you need to think about when you're renting versus owning. Right. And everybody's situation is different. You know, you, there's, Absolutely. No, there's no locked in scenario here by any stretch of the imagination. 
Um, and like you said, depending on how old your children are, if you have children, you know, are they going to go off to college in two years or do you have 15 years to go? You know, there, there's a lot of, right. lot of that factors into what decision, in fact, that you will make. You know, you may feel like you're ready to move on in your life. Uh, you're not going to be here that long, but you need to get your kids through school. You know, so again, the scenarios are all different. But after coming to that conclusion of whether to rent or own, um, you still have a decision to make as to where to live. Now, I know in, you had said in your situation, you weren't leaving the school district. You know, your kids are young teenagers. You, know, you want them to stay with their friends and giving them some security. Uh, Absolutely. But that's not true for everyone. So let's say someone right. is interested or moving to the area from outside of the area, what are the things that they need to look for? How can you help them make that right decision? There are some really great online tools that you can utilize to find information about um, the different areas that you're looking for. I really like a website that goes and reviews crime rates. Um, it's citydata.com and then it's hash crime. And you can actually compare the town that you're looking and thinking of residing in to the national average of crime rate. Now, that's not going to tell you exactly what's going on, but if you're seeing that it's, wow, 10 times higher than the national average, you might be like, hmm, let me think about this a little bit more. But the next thing you should do is you should actually contact the township or the city that you're thinking of residing in and talk to the local police department. Tell them that you're thinking of moving to the area. Ask them what kind of activity they have in that area. Are they, are they constantly in this neighborhood? Um, they're not going to tell you if it's safe or not, but they can tell you the activity that's occurring in that area for them. Mm. I would absolutely Look, if you have children, especially if you have children, but not even if you have children, Megan's Law, find out if there are local offenders that are in the area um, and what that looks like. It, it's frightening, and you don't want to live in fear, but you also want to ensure that you are making the right choices with the information that's being provided to you. And then even school districts. You can take a look and see where different school report cards look in regards to how they're performing national nationally in regards to um, scores and teacher retention and everything else. And if you've got a child with special needs, do, does that child's needs, will it get met in that district? Will you have to go mm -hmm. to a different school district? And if so, how far of a, a bus ride is that? Or and just all those different things that right. you, you want to take the time to research and ask the questions before you just say, wow, this is a really pretty place. I think I want to live here. Right. And I also think, Shelby, that uh, probably, you know, the experience of your realtor comes in big time here. You know, how long have they been in the area? How well do they know your area that you're considering? Because they're certainly mm -hmm. going to be able to point you in the right direction as well. Um, right. So after they make the decision whether to rent or buy, they, they figure out where they want to live and they complete the move. What other pieces of advice can you give them to do after they've made the move? You know, there is so much that goes on when you first get into that new place and you want to make everything as homey and as perfect as possible, but you could forget about certain things. Um, you know, changing the locks, that house that you purchased has been seen by many, many people with a lockbox that had a key in it. Mm. You don't want to have any extra keys hanging around. Um, if you have a garage door, an electronic garage door, change that code. That's something that, again, it can kind of get missed. Um, one of the things that I jokingly tell my clients when they're somewhere new is, you should go introduce yourself to your neighbors. You know, first of all, avoid them popping in unexpectedly when you're in the midst of trying to move, but it's also going to show a form of trying to build a relationship with them that you might get some extra support there that you're looking for. Um, you know, other things are simple things like taking pictures of your belongings now that you're in there, they're in your house and attaching it to your new homeowner's insurance policy or, um, even things like updating your driver's license, right. updating your car registration, your voting card, um, notifying the, the, you might not want to, but notifying the IRS <laughs> and the post office so that. They're notified of where to find you now. Um, the other thing that 
I would absolutely make sure that you just confirm is that your utilities have all been transferred into your name. You make the assumption that everything is good and then all of a sudden you could find out that you come home one day to not having your electrical on because mm. they thought it was still the previous owner and no they didn't case. pay the bill and it all of a sudden got shut off. So it's just simple things like that that are sure. quick things on a checklist that you go back and say, okay, I think we're going to be good here. Yeah. That's some great advice. Thanks uh, for sharing that. Shelby, what do you find are the normal misconceptions that people in this situation have? Well, um, I think the first thing that will come across to anyone who's in the process of going through a divorce is, wow, can I do this? Um, Am I equipped to do this alone? Because previously you weren't. And I think that if you are surrounding yourself with people that can support you, whether that's emotionally there, but also the people that have the skills to walk you through the steps of things, it will be a much easier transition for you. Um, A lot of people might think they can't afford a home. You know, I'm going through a divorce and there's, I, I don't have a lot of money. There, there are government programs that can assist with no money down or, or small amounts of money needed. Um, there's so many different options that are out there that once you get past your, your hesitation and you start asking the questions and surrounding yourself with people that can provide you with the answers, um, I think that there's great potential for them to have the freedom to buy their next home. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And I I agree that I think, you know, once you get over that emotional step that, you know, there are a lot of people out there that will help you and people that are experienced and know their trade, um, you know, a, a great realtor who's obviously been there in your situation, but, you know, just knows, you know, the different types of loan programs that exist for the area, you know, and, like you mentioned, little to no money down. There's a lot of people don't know that those things even exist today uh, after going through that housing crisis, you know, 10 years ago. But there's a lot of great programs out there. And again, being informed, you know, makes it a lot easier. I also think it helps you build your confidence back uh, as a person when you have those people surrounded around you, like you said. So, you know, this has been really informative Uh, You shared some really valuable information, but unfortunately, we're about out of our allotted time for today's segment. But before we go, I'd like to give you the opportunity to share with our listeners that wish to reach out to you or maybe are interested in receiving a copy of your ebook. How can they do that? Well, my book is available on my website, which is QuakertownRealtor.com. They can also reach me by phone. My phone number is 215-892-2178. Or they can feel free to reach me by email at Shelby Miller Q Town at kw.com. Great, Shelby. Thank you again for coming on the show and sharing your expertise. Uh, you know, if we've helped just one person that's struggling and making some of these decisions, it was certainly well worth it. Keep up the great work, and we hope that uh, you have great success. Tim, thank you so much for having me and having the opportunity to talk with you today. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.